say about a person what their favorite candy is. Can you tell something about a person? Yes. Um, are you alive today? No. 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 <laughs> happy birthday. And happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Amina. Happy birthday to you. What's going to be great about this year? Um, How old are you? Fifteen. I can drive. Yes. Sort of. <laughs> You're going to get your permit soon? Yeah, today. Today? Like the day of? Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Don't fail the test. Cool. Yeah. Don't fail the test. Yeah, no pressure. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right, so. Jacob did well once we die. Uh, music show will be good. I mean, uh, uh, Chase will give our opening prayer. Our Dr. Master will be by Ben. Uh, personal share is also by Amina. And then uh, our preacher will be the Holy Spirit. Our teacher will be Brother John. And then giving things will be by Ben. Yeah. And then time over to Amina. Uh, do, you, do you guys know what's happening on Saturday, by the way? It's, uh, it's grave cleaning. Okay, so you're supposed to like, so according to this, which you can take one of these if you want to, um, come prepared with your phone to take pictures if you have one, dress in outside clothes, bring an umbrella if it's rainy, and a little bucket and a bristle brush to clean the gravestones. So that I guess so that you can see what's written on them in case they're kind of mossy or something. Um, so it it looks like it's going to be cool. Bring a friend, grab one of these. They're over here on the on the uh, bookshelf. All right. Music. Do you want to say something about it? Um, introduce. Sure. She kind of talks a little bit about it. So it's. Okay. It's a video of this girl. She's singing um, a French folk song, I believe. It's a Christmas song. Um, and it's in French, but my dad taught me to sing it. I'm not going to sing it. So Come on. Um, I think it's really pretty. So I know it's a Christmas song, and it's only November, but I think it's really pretty. So while we're answering that, we're listening to this. We're going to bring that. Keys.
Great. Is she singing about the Christ child? Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
it worked out in a way, you know? Um, yeah, it was just really cool. So <clears throat> I know that even though we have trials, it's um, important to have them because you never know, like, farther down the road what it's going to do for you and what you're going to learn from it. So, yeah. Say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just kind of simple and profound that to get to something better, you have to leave something behind. Right? To get the new growth on the bottom of the forest floor, you have to burn off the old wood. You have to move on to get to better places. Don't we all? Like, And, and sometimes it's really hard to because we like what's comfortable and known. We like what's known in our lives, right? We like things to be comfortable, orderly. So it's really hard to move on to a new place because that's kind of like chaotic. We don't know what we're going to get when we leave the place where we are. And so it's sometimes scary to delve into the unknown. Repentance is about changing, right? It's about leaving something behind of ourselves and moving to a better place. Burning off the old dead wood so that new growth can happen. There is no change without leaving something back. Uh, and so milestones like birthdays are really good times to like reflect on what's changed, you know, like where am I now? What's happened? And those last, what, like four or five, five years, right, that you've been here or something, um, it was a difficult change, but it's good change, right? You like what's happened since the move. So what what are you struggling with letting go of? Changing because it's hard to change or it's scary to change? So that new new growth can happen. Is there anything that you think you're like, uh, I'm not ready to do that yet? Now's a good time. Um, I noticed yesterday there was a bit of distractions going on. So I invite you to just kind of like, don't be in bondage to your device if it's a struggle for you, and just make yourself be present mentally, emotionally, physically, like be here, because you'll get more out of it. Um, I kind of struggle, I was like, okay, am I supposed to like say stuff or what, you know? Um, I, don't, I don't actually care that much about being liked as I do about you getting the gospel. Like that matters more to me. Um, and I, and I do love you guys, and I like you. Um, so if I don't say stuff when you're distracted, then it means to me that I don't actually care that much about what you could receive here. I'm like, oh, it's okay. It doesn't really matter. But it does matter a lot. Like, I actually care a whole bunch about if you get to feel the Holy Ghost in this class, to, to learn something and testify and strengthen you, right? I do care about that a whole bunch. Uh, so I'm just mentioning, you know, if you're struggling, if you're like, if something's kind of taking precedent over you being present here, then then that thing is the enemy, whatever it is. Like, then that, then that has a chance to keep you back from experiencing something that could be good for you. Not that I am good for you, but that the content here, what you can receive is good for you. So thanks for um, being, being present here today. Uh, okay. That's a big question. Yeah. Why does it matter if you, how you feel about yourself? Why does it, why, why does it make a difference? Chase, yes. Uh, I think it'll affect how you treat uh, around you. I, I think, agree. Why though? Like, um, if you're in a bad mood, like, say I bombed a, a Spanish test. And I'm gonna be like down on myself. I'm probably gonna be like quicker to be like mad at Trevor when he beats me at soccer. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Where otherwise you'd be completely delighted to be beaten yeah, by Trevor at like, soccer. I'd but. be like next time, but instead I'd be like, Yeah. You suck, Trevor. Yeah. yeah. And it actually has nothing to do with the soccer game at all, right? No. It has to yeah. do with you being in a bad mood about something totally different. Exactly. Good. So you're down on yourself when you don't perform well, when you don't meet your own expectation for yourself, yeah. and it's easy to take that out on other people. Yeah. It happens all the time. People take it out on you, 
You're their punching bag. You're their whipping boy. And you also do that to other people sometimes, right? It's tough. And I mean, can you not get beaten by Trevor at soccer? I don't know. Taylor. I've beat him before. There you go. I have locked him down. Okay. <laughs> Tackles. Only when I want you to chase. <laughs> <laughs> the gauntlet's been thrown. I forgot. Taylor. Okay. <laughs> yourself and you're like, oh man, I've got some struggles right now. I, oh man. Mm -hmm. like, um, <laughs> if you can love yourself and Quote. still... Yeah. Oh man, I've got some struggles. It's like, oh man. Yeah. Quote Taylor. Um, if you can look at yourself and think that and still love yourself or still like yourself for who you are, let's, looking at other people, it, it expands your ability to love them. Like, if I'm like this, like, and I love myself, I can love anybody that way. Like, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, you, you have to learn how to be have high expectations for yourself and be gentle with yourself as you try to get there, right? Um, don't hate on yourself when you, when you find out, oh, I guess I'm not perfect, right? Oh, news break, right? So you gotta be gentle with yourself and then you're more likely to be gentle with others. Great point. And how you can you really truly love others if you don't actually love yourself? I don't think it's possible. But what is loving yourself anyway? I mean, what is that? What does that actually mean? It's kind of weird. What is self-esteem? What are we talking about there? Yeah, pass the ball. Loving yourself is accepting who you are in the moment. Like accepting your sin, accepting your imperfection. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm good with this. I guess I'm fine. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm going to go, yeah, I don't need no. to change. Is that no, accepting yourself? No. no. What do you mean? You accept your imperfections, um, but you strive to get better each day. What if you accept yourself and you don't accept your imperfections? Is that possible? Because how can you be satisfied with I mean, are you talking about being satisfied with just being the way you are? Oh, I'm good. I'm good with that. I'm good with the way I am. How do you find that balance? Because I hear what you're saying, and I'm kind of pressing you. I mean, I agree with you, but also, where's the, where's the line between being satisfied and accepting yourself just the way you are and believing that God is trying to make something out of you way more than what you are right now? Compared to what you could be, you are useless, <laughs> like worthless, compared to what you will be. And so you'll never progress like a baby. Like, you're like, oh, I'm good crawling around all the time. I, I'm fine. I don't ever need to walk. I don't ever need to try to stand up. I'm, I'm good. I'm good down here. Right? How does that work? How do you get to appreciate yourself and try to be better? I don't know. Paul? Comments? Are we kind of... Are we kind of stumped? What's your own experience? Oh yeah, there's a man. Boom. Oh, he can catch. He can't just kick. So it's a, like in order to like, it matters because uh, to just accept who you are right now as you grow is not going to be enough. Like Heavenly Father obviously will need you to improve, and by realizing like what you do wrong. Uh, you'll be able to figure out how to fix the mistakes that you make and be able to grow and improve. And you just like, so you can't reach perfect, but you gotta keep like improving and try to get as close as you can. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, like you don't, you don't have, have to. to. It's a choice. It's a choice to believe in a better world tomorrow, right? You can't believe in God and not believe that you can be more than you are. It's the same thing. Because God is more than you are, and you're supposed to become like him. Jesus said, be like me, right? I'm perfect, be like me. So, um, it's like if you were to meet Jesus today, he'd be like, oh, hi, yeah, great, I already know you, but hey, nice to see you. Change and repent, 
Okay. That'd be his first message. He'd be like, I, I know you, I like you, I love you, and you've got to change. Repent is like the first, the, the message the Spirit is always giving us. It's like, you matter, you have value, you are loved, and you've got to change. Repentance is like the first, let's say, second message of, from, from heaven. One, you're loved. Two, because you're loved, you've got to become more than you are. So loving ourselves, liking ourselves, means that we do things that we respect. Isn't it? It's like, if I want to like myself, i got to be the kind of person that's likable. If I want to respect myself, I have to do the things to respect myself, that, that are respectable. And if I want to love myself, I have to treat myself well, or I'm not going to like me. It's like, me is the enemy. I'm not treating myself like I matter. I'm not going to love myself. So you have to do well by you in order to like you. You want future you to do well. So present you has got to love you enough to do what must be done today so that you can like yourself tomorrow or else you'll hate yourself tomorrow if you don't treat yourself well. Yeah? So self-esteem is this kind of weird idea. It just means doing things that you are proud of and taking care of yourself. Doing what's right. Um, I think everybody has seen this, but the first thing that came to mind when you said that was um, the little kid and he said, I love myself, even though it looks like a bunch, like a nugget. I love myself. <laughs> <laughs> or just, but um, it was kind of funny. But like you said, you still need to treat yourself well, uh -huh. even though you might have something you are not proud of or something you don't like about yourself, you still need to treat yourself well. And he said that even though he looks like a burnt chicken nugget, yeah. he still loves himself. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> That burden chicken nugget has a place in the world, right? Awesome. Any other thoughts on that? If you don't feel good about yourself, if you're not liking yourself or loving yourself, then say, where do I need to change? So that I'll be proud of me. I think, I don't know, I think I love myself like crazy because I try really hard to do what's right by me, to treat myself well. And so I'm proud of who I am. I, I feel like I try to live a good life, and so I feel good. But I don't really care what other people think about me. It doesn't really matter. I don't even spend five minutes thinking about what other people think of me. Because what does that matter to me? I know what I think of myself, and I treat myself well. And Christ's gospel shows me how to do that. Today is not early release, is it? No. It's, I mean, it's early release, but it's not advisory. Okay. So... Um, I wanted to, I, I'm still trying really hard to get through, okay, here's what. What if you see someone doing something that they shouldn't in the moment, but it's not, but it's a minor issue? Should I tell the teacher or let it go because it's not my problem? Let it go? What's that? Snitches get stitches. Snitches get stitches. Okay, yeah, let it go. Like, let people decide for themselves how they're going to be. And then you have less stress in your life. If you don't have to try to feel like you're policing people, right? So yeah, let it go. You you need to take care of your business, and you don't need to take care of other people's business either, unless it's hurting you. Yeah. What if it's something major? Okay, so that's a different thing because this is a minor issue. So what if something's doing something they shouldn't do, and it's a big deal? What do we mean by big deal? Is it hurting them, or is it hurting somebody else? I think both. Okay. Then if if you are being hurt. You owe it to yourself to treat yourself well and stop with the madness, right? To do everything you can that is in your power to stop yourself from being hurt. You don't have to put up with that. Now, if somebody's hurting themselves... What do you do? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's everything themselves. Uh, just like 
I just like major try to your best to help them out because I mean they're already hurting and so when people are hurting you can't always think straight. Why do people hurt themselves? Because they're hurting. They're in pain, right? I mean that's part of life. You get hurt. So uh, if they're hurting themselves, you gotta do what you can to help them stay on the on the right path and keeping keep helping them keep their head up and moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think you do what you can to bless other people. Uh, there's a right way to do that, though, because um, people who are in a bad place usually don't like to hear that they're in a bad place or be reminded of that. So it can usually not go very well. So if you can come at it from a place of love and not fear, then you can actually make a difference for people who are in a bad place and hurting themselves. You can, why do people not treat themselves well? Because they don't feel good about themselves. So how, what is the antidote to that? I think I'm worthless, so I'm gonna treat myself like I'm worthless. I think I'm no good, so I'm not gonna do any good for myself. So what does a person need to hear when they're in a place of not caring about themselves, not liking or loving themselves and hurting themselves, what message needs to be heard? Yeah, the message. I'm coming. Um, I think the message they need to hear is that they are enough. Yes, exactly. So they're believing a lie. I don't matter. I'm worthless. I'm no good. I don't need to treat myself well. In fact, I find some kind of pleasure in hurting myself. Right? So that's the lie. So then the truth, that is the antidote to that lie, the light to combat that darkness is, you do matter. You are valuable. And you can, you can get to a better place. You can. And that works. You don't have to come across as, I'm better than you. You need to come across like, you matter. And you can do that for people. I mean, you can help people feel that love for themselves. If you are sincere and you truly feel that for another person, they will feel that. And that can really lift people out of, out of a hole. I've seen it done. I think you need to tell them how much you love them, how much God loves them, mm -hmm. how much other people love them, and how much they are needed. And I think that can help a lot. It can help a lot. And that, uh, and that can be scary for somebody who isn't in a place of self-care, self-love. Um, so you're going to have to be persistent when you send that message. Do you have the power to change people's lives? Do you actually believe you do? Have you experienced anything like that with friends who have been in a bad place? You really can make a difference. Because the fact is everybody matters. Uh, why did you decide to create a music share? I don't know, because we need music. And I was really interested in what you guys had to, what inspires you? What inspires you? And there's a lot of really good music all over, not just in the hymn book. So that's why I did that, because I wanted to hear more from you guys. Okay, um, let's read these scriptures right here. Okay? Um, open up your scriptures, please. Let me read these questions here, and we're going to look for answers in the next 10 minutes. What should I do if I was lied to a lot? Somebody, one of our friends among us, has been lied to a lot, presumably by somebody who is not supposed to lie, by perhaps somebody who's in a position of authority. What should I do if I was lied to a lot? Well, don't lie. That's hard. I mean, don't perpetuate the problem. It stops with you. Whatever has happened in the past, whatever's happened to you, it stops with you and it doesn't go on to, to create more chaos. Advice? Uh, I was going to say, if, if you can tell.
already finding out what proofs you can find for the lies, mm -hmm. you can try to just like know the truths instead of knowing the lies. Okay. So presumably you find out you've been lied to because yeah. you figured out what the truth was. Mm -hmm. Right? Either that or you figure out you've been lied to because you've been told you've been lied to. Oh. And then you try to find the truth off of what you think the lies are, or if you know the lies and what they were, find out what the truth is. Okay. Those. Yeah. At some point, depending on what the relationship is like, you're probably gonna have to confront that. That's really scary. Um, how can you love your enemies? What if your enemy has committed a serious crime? Presumably against you, right? What if? So, what if your enemy's committed a serious crime? Um, you need somebody in your corner. You need somebody to talk to. Like, you need to talk to a trusted adult who can help you through something difficult. If 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 you are in an unsafe place, if you've been abused, if you've been the victim of a crime, like you need help from somebody who has power to help you. So find somebody in your life that you trust. And some of these questions, I mean, I, I realize that more help is needed than just a one-minute answer, right? Um, anybody can text me anytime or call me, and I'm happy to help with more specific issues in your life than maybe what can be addressed on a card like this. I'm happy to be that and do that for you. Um, and I have a lot of experience in helping people through tough stuff. So, if not me, somebody, somebody, you need somebody, you need to talk. You don't have to deal with stuff on your own in silence and suffer and continue on in an unsafe place. Um, sometimes people have to be brought to justice. Because what happens? You don't want them to hurt somebody else, right? You owe it to yourself and you owe it to other people who may be victims of the same person to put a stop to it. So sometimes that's really hard to do and very scary to do because you're afraid it's gonna get worse, not better. And it's really hard. Um, so that's why you need help. You need strength. You need people behind you. Taylor and Sylvia. Christians are a great place to go. They are. Absolutely. And I mean, your parents. What if your enemy is yourself? We are all our own worst enemy, right? Who's the most powerful person in your life? You are. Absolutely. So you have an, an enormous amount of power to hurt yourself and to hurt other people. Unlimited potential of awfulness is in you. Isn't that scary? And unlimited potential for good is also in you. So you are the most powerful. Um, okay. Let's do this. 30 Nephi 12, 38 to 44. Who's got it? Okay. I will Enemies. And behold, I say unto you, love your enemies, 
Plus one dot plus u is equal to one dot u u and square root of one. So this this part will be u and plus is u. Wow, that's tough, right? So where's the line between turning the other cheek, going the extra mile, giving your coat when somebody's trying to steal it from you, giving them your other coat too? It's like. Does Jesus really want us to just be victims of other people's brutality and selfishness? Is that what he's asking us to do? So, it's like um, if someone else is doing something that you know you don't like, but there's not really much you can do about it other than go tell someone. they take something of yours, there's all these different places. Mm -hmm. It's just their wrongdoing that they'll have to deal with later. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to distance yourself from the problem or the problem person. Um, sometimes you have to let things go. Trying to, because again, trying to meet out justice on your own in your own terms is the problem when, when it comes to forgiving other people. That creates problems for you. So you have to let the part of the justice thing go and leave justice to God. And then you do what you have to do to take care of yourself and take care of other people. Uh, thank you. PNC 98, 20, wow, 23 to 37. That's long. Ah, oh, we don't have time for that all. We were supposed to get through all of these. Yes, Sylvia. Well, I was going to say I can read it. <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's, uh, this was brought up by somebody in another question. I don't think, I don't know if we have time, we don't, I know we don't have time to read all of it. But these are the rules in the Doctrine and Covenants. What was happening was the saints were beset upon by people who hated them. I mean, and we all have, maybe our problems aren't as big as the early saints, right? You know what they were going through. Every place they went and tried to gather and assemble themselves, people started to have a real problem with them, and they burned their houses. They chased them out at gunpoint. No matter the weather, no matter what they had sacrificed to build, they wanted them gone. So they were refugees on the run almost all the time, from Kirtland to Independence to Nauvoo, finally to Salt Lake City. Um, far west is in there like they just had to keep moving so Joseph was seeking for revelation on like how are we supposed to deal with this how are we supposed to when people are attacking us and we're peaceable followers of Jesus Christ do we just take it how much do we have to take before we pull out our guns and load them and fire them back and defend ourselves what are we supposed to do Big question, right? Jesus says, turn the other cheek. Love your enemy. Pray for them. Yet at the same time, your, your wife and kids are like living in under like a tarp in the winter with no food. And you're like, okay, this isn't all right. You know, this isn't okay with me. God, what are we supposed to do? So that's, I mean, that's where we're getting some of this, these rules of engagement on, on how to properly manage ourselves in this kind of situation. So we don't have school tomorrow. So what if on Friday when we come back we can get right into this? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'll remember these scriptures. You guys are great. Did you see this? Seeds are growing when you put them in the right kind of environment. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I do have a thought or a principle for this day, and if it's your principle, then you need to take this and come out every day to learn and to better strengthen our foundation. Keep us so we can be a light to lead others unto you, and that we can be kind and we can be loving. Keep us so we can 
Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.